Hello and welcome to Esri Australia's video tutorial on how to create a choropleth map at a local or suburban level. Now before I begin, I just want to clarify that if you're actually looking to create a choropleth map using statistical areas, for example SA1s, SA2s, SA3s, SA4s, or even postcode areas or state areas, then you can actually visit ArcGIS Online by clicking Add, Search for Layers, and then making sure that ArcGIS Online is selected. If you type in Statistical Boundaries Australia, we actually have a number of boundary layers that come up that you can actually use to create choropleth maps from. Now I know that the ABS, for example, the Australian Bureau of Statistics, often publish uh, statistics anywhere between an SA2 and an SA4. So if I'm going to just click on this SA2 boundaries layer for a second, it might take a moment to load, but when it does, I can actually, if I have the data that is from something like the ABS, I could actually uh, map that data against this boundary layer to create something like a choropleth map, potentially. So just to clarify, if you are looking at creating choropleth maps at statistical area uh, levels, then perhaps visiting this uh, particular, or searching for this particular term in ArcGIS Online uh, will be a bit more fruitful. If you are wanting to go ahead and create a choropleth map at a very local level, for example, at a suburb level, like the suburb of Labrador, for instance, then continue through this video tutorial. However, before you begin, I'd like you to consider your goals and why a choropleth map in this case would be useful. When collecting data in the field in a local area or in a local suburb, for instance, it may be better to instead map your data as point data, rather than through the use of polygons or over large areas. For instance, if I want to collect, uh, collect data on litter in each of the parks in Labrador, it might be better to simply just map that as individual point data on each of these parks rather than polygon data. However, it is up to you. Just consider what your goals are moving forward. In order to create a choropleth at a local level, for example in one suburb, we will first need to create a new feature layer before even opening a new map. In this guide, you will create a choropleth map that displays the amount of litter in different parts of the suburb of Labrador, Queensland. So, our first step is to actually go to content, and you can sit in my content, and from there we want to actually click on this button here, create, and then choose feature layer. And it'll give us a range of uh, resources here, and we want to click this second one, build a layer. And as we're mapping, um, cor or we want our data to, to, to be displayed as choropleth um, data, points and lines are actually fairly useless for us, so we want to choose polygons today, and we're going to click on create, and then next. Now, here you can set your map extent, uh, and that really is the entirety of the area you'll be collecting data from. If it's one suburb, or suburb, you probably don't need it to display all of Australia. However, it doesn't really matter if it does. So I'm just going to leave it as is and click next. From here, I'm going to create a title. Uh, let's call it training, and I'm gonna call it litter in Labrador. And it's got a tag for me already. I might just add a second tag for myself, just so that I know it's training as well. And I'm going to click done when I'm happy with it. Feel free to chuck in a summary if you want. And it'll create this new feature layer for us and take us automatically to the feature layers uh, items page. From the new feature layers item page, we want to first go to data. So we're going to click on data and we want to flip it from table to fields because we need to add a couple of fields based on what we're collecting as data. And from here, you'll see that all the, the existing fields are already present. You can see that this one is photos and files. That's a particularly useful one if you've got students out in the field and you want them to take a photo of the data site itself. They can actually attach it to uh, this feature layer. But we want to add a couple more. So we're going to hit add and because we're looking at litter in the suburb of Labrador, it makes sense that this first one we call something like amount 
uh, litter. And you'll notice that in the field name I don't have a space. You can't actually have spaces in the field names. You can see that down here as well. You can split them if you want with an underscore as well. However, in the display name, which is what people can see, you can have your spaces there. So we're going to call it amount of litter. Now, as we are collecting data on the amount of litter in a certain location, it doesn't make sense to have the field type set as string. So a string, and as you can see, length is there, allows us to make notes about a site. So it's text-based. Uh, if we're collecting number, uh, data on the number of litter in a particular area, we want to choose integer, which deals with whole numbers. Okay, so we're going to click integer for that. And you can put in a default value if you want. I'm not going to. I'm going to click add new field. And you'll see that once it reloads, that we've got our new field in our list of fields here. Now, for instance, if you were collecting multiple uh, types of data in this particular uh, feature layer, then you could add as many as you want. I might add a couple of extra ones, just as an example. And the first one might be pH uh, levels. And again, I can separate that out a bit more nicely in the display name. I don't want string again because I'm going to be using numbers, but I am going to perhaps use decimals this time. So I don't want to use an integer, which deals with whole numbers. I want to choose double. And again, I'm going to leave the default value blank and hit add new field. And then let's add one more just for fun. I'm going to click add and I'm going to click uh, make this one observations. Uh, and I'm going to just repeat that observations. And this is actually, I want to leave this one as a string. And I might decide that I want to give them a little bit more characters to use. But this is essentially allowing students or data collectors in the field to make some quick and simple notes about the data site that they're collecting from. So I'm going to click add new field again. And you'll see that down the bottom I've got my three new fields that I have introduced and added to this feature layer. So from here, I want to go back to overview. And you can either click on this or click on this, but you want to open it in a map viewer now. So we're actually getting into the map side of things. And if I navigate from details to content, no, I'm going to explain these suburbs in a second. But if you navigate to content, I'm going to turn the suburbs one off for a second. You'll actually notice that training litter in Labrador, which is my new feature layer, is actually present. Okay, you can't see anything yet because we haven't actually created any polygons. But it's there ready to go. And if I was to click on edit, I could begin to add those. However, before we do, because we're collecting uh, data at a suburban level, we need to actually find a feature layer that shows suburbs. So if you click on add, search for layers, and I've done this, you saw it just a moment ago, it was on my map. Change to ArcGIS Online and type in something along the lines of sub, yep, there we go, suburb Queensland. And we want to choose, I think I chose, I chose this one here. So Queensland suburb by somebody Griffith, and you can just click on the plus button there. And it'll show you all the suburbs in Queensland. Now they are loading right now. Now, we're only interested in one suburb and that's in our uh, feature layer name, it's Labrador. So I'm going to go up here to the search bar, I'm gonna type in Labrador, and I want to make sure I get the right one, so I'm going to add Queensland. There we go. And it takes me into that particular suburb, and it's clearly labelled for us too. So we're now ready to begin adding our new polygons to the map. We need to first make sure our feature layers are both on, and then we want to click on Edit. We want to click on New Feature. And you can see that as I hover over here, it says click to start drawing, 
or press control to enable snapping as well. Snapping is really useful because it'll snap my points to another line or to the boundary of another polygon. So for instance, if I zoom in a little bit here, and I'm going to just drag a little bit, and if I want to snap, I'm just going to press control, and you can see that that little cross comes up, and I'm going to click, and every time I want to change directions, I just make another click, and I'm just holding control at the moment. So as I do that, and then let's say that that's my first polygon area, I'm going to click there to change directions again. I want to snap it to the road again. Snap it in a couple of places. The more the frequently you snap on something that's a bit curvy, curving in shape, the more accurate your uh, polygon will be. And once you're happy with it, double click to finish. And you'll notice, I'm just going to shut this for a second, that you've actually created a polygon there. So any data that was to do with this area um, would potentially could potentially be used to create some kind of coropleth. And I'm going to click on the shape again, and I can actually you can actually see our three fields that we added before. So we've got our amount of litter, our pH levels, and our observations. I'm going to fill this one in. I'm going to say that in this particular area there were let's say 253 uh, pieces of litter. At the site that I collect, uh, collected pH level uh, data from, let's say it was 6.7, and observations, uh, let's say the bins in the park were overflowing. So there's an example of us entering data. Now, for today's video tutorial, I'm simply going to add it that way. However, it might be that after you collect your as you go and create each of your polygon shapes, you don't actually put any data in because you might still need to go into the field to collect that data. So this is just an example of that process and you can actually go back into these polygons at any time and add that data or edit that data as you need. Okay. Now all you need to do essentially to create the next uh, polygon is to click new feature again. And again, I'm going to snap I don't want to leave any spaces and again the more frequently I snap the more accurate it'll be up against that wall and I'm going to go like that and I'm happy with that area and again I'm going to put something in like you know this was a particularly bad area 457 pieces of litter. I'm going to leave pH levels and observations blank because I'm going to simply create a coropleth for the amount of litter in each area. Once you've finished creating your polygons and have entered data for each one, you should have something that looks similar to this image. Notice that the entirety of Labrador has been covered with self-made polygons. Now I must stress the shape that these polygons take is completely up to your goals and your needs and you need to consider how that's going to impact on, on your shapes and on how you, how you arrive at that decision. For the example in front of us is simply just that, an example, and I've randomly created polygons for the purpose of the training uh, tutorial. It might be, for instance, that you just want to create polygons of the park areas of Labrador to compare the litter in the park areas alone rather than the entirety of Labrador. So that's something to consider. How are you going to decide what your polygon shapes are going to look like? Are they going to be, um, for example, 20 by 20 metre square areas? It depends on how you are going to come to that decision. But from here, we want to go back to our contents tab and we want to hover over training litter in Labrador, remembering that we've added litter to every single uh, polygon. Okay, you can see that as I click on random ones, I've added litter to them. So it only works if your data's in there. But I want to hover over my training litter in Labrador data, and I want to click on this icon, the shapes icon, the change style icon. And from here, 
I don't want to show the location of these anymore. I want to show the amount of litter. So I need to choose what attribute I want to show. It's the second one here for us, amount of litter. And it takes a moment to load, but gives us a couple more drawing styles now. And you can see that it's trying to be a little bit smart, but we're after coral plates, so we actually want to choose this second option, counts and amounts color. And we're going to click select on that. And you can see that it's already beginning to take the shape of a uh, coral plate for us. We want to click on options from here. And we might wish to classify our data a little bit more strictly. So you can actually create uh, classes, you can add classes, you can take classes away, it's up to you. I'm going to leave it at four. You can decide how your uh, classes are going to be broken up. So whether there's going to be natural breaks or equal intervals, etc. Um, and you can choose your color scheme as well. So I might decide that I want to use this purple to beige color or red to beige color. It's up to you. Or you can actually go into Legend and click on each of these symbols themselves and change them to a color of your choice. It depends on what you're after. But I'm going to leave it as is. I'm going to click OK and I'm going to click Done. And it's important you click Done because that locks in that style. And if any time you're unhappy with it, you can simply go straight back to Change Style and make those amendments. And what we see here is a very simple Coropleth map at a local level. And we can see that if I click on these darker ones, or I can go to the legend even, and it tells us exactly what uh, these colors represent. And you'll notice that in this case, I've designed it so that we can see that there are, there's a heavier presence of litter uh, along the path that Bigger a Creek takes through the area. So it seems like litter is accumulating in the creek and there's some kind of problem with with um, some waste disposal there. You'll notice that on the front we have not as, uh, sorry, on the coastline we don't have as much litter and that might be due to something like uh, the council's efforts to keep those particular areas clean and tidy for tourists and for residents to enjoy. So that's an example and if I scroll right out you can see that it's quite small, but there's your coral plate map at that really local specialized uh, layer. And that brings us to, to an end of this video tutorial. We hope it's been helpful. And if you need any further assistance or resources, please feel free to visit our uh, education website at Esri Australia.